I'd like to thank my parents today for being here today, for my achievements in music. I would like to take you on a short journey through my life until I tell you how I connect with my parents, even though they're no more in this world. I wish they were still with me. My mother, Sivisa Begum, and my father, Gomodar Shukta, both giants in the field of Bangla music, gave me a small nudge once in a while and just watched to see what happens. Did I have it in me? I'm talking about my first recording at the age of nine when I sang Prajapati, a Muslim song for children under the training of my mother. The song was released through an international music label, EMI Records. I'm also talking about the nudges that my father gave me for lessons in tabla and light classical music. And my mother was teaching me Nazrul songs and my father's tunes from the 1940s. And that was an early age for me. But uh, nature took its own course. And while I was going through my studies at uh, University Laboratory School, Notterdam College, London International College for my graduation, music followed me like a shadow. From a five-star hotel in Taka to pubs in London, I continued performing, recording my music, and I was building a following for myself. And then when I was doing financial services and insurance business successfully in London, that was back in the 80s, the most popular tabloid newspaper, The Sun, did an interview of me, calling me a young, upwardly mobile Muslim in their community. And when I told UK for my concert, much later, with my band Miles, we were listed in the most popular entertainment guide called Time Out of London. And that I used to follow as a student. So obviously it felt very good. When Miles won the intellectual property rights case in an Indian court against some big names in Bollywood film industry for stealing our song, we were mentioned as an example, as a reference in the Edexcel economics book on how to effectively apply IPR laws in any part of the world. I kept my music going through different phases of life. I loved doing music, so I never gave up. You have to find your passion and do what you love to do in order to build a life that you want. In my student life, music paid for my tuition fees. Later, through my 15 year of corporate career, music went on in the evenings. Through rehearsals, shows, recordings, and some of the best creations came when I wasn't even doing it full time. But it is the God-given talent that I nurtured and the passion that I held on to. I did not give up. 
most of us go through certain phases in life, like being a student, having a job, getting married, having children, etc. And I was no exception. But I did not give up on my dreams of being the top artist or musician in the country. So I find myself in the top position since the early 90s till today. That is like 30 years. It's a long time to be at the top in this fast-changing industry when new genre of music, new artists, new bands are coming in all the time. People, my followers, listeners, continue to ask me how I play the bass guitar and sing these difficult songs at the same time. Your brain must be split into two, some of them say. Bass is playing a different rhythm and notes synced with the drums. The voice is singing another tune in a different rhythm. It is impossible, some of them say, and not many examples in the world. I say, I don't know how. It comes naturally to me. It happened because I love the subject that is music. I learned it deeply. I practiced it year after year and still do. I performed my music decade after decade and there's still no sign of slowing down. Last one month, for example, has been very hectic for me, touring Australia and England several times in one month. And we can perhaps call it a success when people pay me to listen to my creations live across the world. My music has taken me to USA, Canada, Germany, Italy, UK, Austria, Switzerland, South Korea, Dubai, Abu Dhabi, India, many, many times. That is like exporting my music to the world. So, while I stand at the door of 50 years of my musical journey, I realize that I probably played the long game quite successfully. Now I'm ready to share my life's experiences with those who are interested to know. You'll find many untold stories of me in my upcoming biography to be released sometime next year. And here are some tips for leading a better life taken from the pages of my life. So, how do you build a better future for yourselves? Follow these five principles, some very basic principles. Number one, create your own opportunity. How you spend your day determines the person you'll be tomorrow. What you do one day at a time eventually makes up your entire life. Don't wait for the government to do something for you. Don't wait for the economy to get better. Don't wait for the traffic jam to improve. You have to keep doing what you have to do to get there. If you want to, for example, if you want to build a healthier body, for example, you don't try one day and stop. 
even work out for a week and stop. You have to work for at least one whole year. If you want to build a side business, for example, while you're still a student, you can't be watching TV every evening and expect the business to grow. If you want to achieve your dreams, but you get back to sleep rather than getting up, it's not going to happen. You're not meant to stay at the same place for all your life. You'll have to grow and be a better person each day. You have to be willing to pay the price to become the best version of yourself. Secondly, play the long game. Most people give up on their dreams when they face obstacles, but do not give up because there is no such thing as overnight success. It's a marathon, it's not a sprint. If you choose instant gratification and comfort over, let's say, perseverance, you will miss the opportunity for big wins. If you need to gain some new skill or knowledge, you can gain that. But without perseverance and patience, you will not win the long game. Remind yourself of your long-term vision every single day. In order to achieve your long-term vision, you might have to make short-term sacrifices. But that way you will ensure that you create a future that you can be proud of. If you cannot motivate yourself to focus on the long term, take some time to work on your goals and create a vision that genuinely excites you. And number three, I would say, is avoid analysis paralysis. And what is that? Analysis paralysis is basically inability to make a decision and to take action. It means that you are overanalyzing and overthinking a decision and holding yourself back from actually doing something. At its core, analysis paralysis is procrastination and perfectionism. Like everything has to be perfectly in place. Do it at a certain time, specific time. Or the environment has to be right. Right people have to be in place. These things slow you down. That's perfectionism. Just do it. Like the Nike slogan, just do it. Most people like to think that they're being smart and uh, diligent by analyzing a decision to death. While all they're doing is procrastinating. Sometimes we're so afraid of making a wrong decision that we don't make a decision at all. You have to trust something, your intuition, our creator, your life, karma, or whatever. Don't allow yourself to be stuck in the planning process instead of actually living your life.
Most of your fears are not justified, made up in your head. Planning and preparation are important, but so is listening to your intuition and being a quick decision maker. That is important. And uh, next point is uh, allow mistakes to be your biggest teacher. Allow mistakes to be your biggest teacher. One of the most common reasons why people don't achieve their goals is that they give up instead of accepting mistakes and failures as a guide towards success. Reality is you can only win the race if you finish it. If you allow them to guide you, your past experiences and the mistakes that you made, they can be your greatest asset. No matter if you're a student, a teacher, an entrepreneur, a writer, a sportsman, an artist, whatever. Playing the long game and relying on the lessons that you have learned from your mistakes is a priceless strategy. There is no one-size-fits-all kind of guide in succeeding, for succeeding in life. But perseverance pays off no matter what your goal is. And the last point, number five, is one of my favorites. Conquer your mornings. Conquer your mornings. This is uh, so important. To conquer your life, you need to tackle it one day at a time. And to win your whole day, you first need to tackle your morning. You don't have to get up at five o'clock in the morning to have a successful life. But your mornings significantly influences your day. If I start my day with gratitude, joy, high energy, that is how the rest of my day is going to look like. On the other hand, if I start my day lazy and in a bad mood, it's hard to have a successful and productive day. If you're not consciously creating a productive morning routine, you may subconsciously create something that stops you from growing, making progress. Wise men say that the secret to your future is hidden in your daily routine. A few minutes can be enough to get yourself into a strong mental state and win the day. So, take the challenge to be more than mediocre. Step up. If you change, the world will change. Thank you very much.